Good morning, loves. Happy 2022. I am popping in actually a little sweat glowy after uh, emptying the compost bin out onto the garden, taking the dog for a walk, sitting on the balcony and drinking two cups of coffee. So I'm a little zingy. But yesterday I shared with my community a practice that we've been doing and I wanted to share it here as well. Um, I've been hearing a lots of folks talking about the new year and manifestation and practices and goals. Um, I love it. I love uh, both the solstice, which it feels really much more aligned to me, but also the new year, any invitation to get clarity about what it is that we want to do with this life and then actually do something about it. So um, I don't do vision boards. I have not made a resolution in a long time, but something that I've been doing with my community this year, and I've really been enjoying it, and so have they, is actually in alignment with this same idea. But instead of making a list or making a vision board, we make a bingo card. And so at the end of our staff retreat in November, I made a bingo card of things that I wanted to invite, accomplish, achieve, uh, experience. Some of those things are for me personally. Some of them are more professionally for Red Thread Publishing and our business. Some of them are for my family. Some of them are goals that I have for our authors. Um, some of them are financial. Some of them are romantic. Some of them are adventurous. It's of the full gamut. It's I've never put parameters on it. So thinking about what you're inviting in and putting it on this card. And the reason I like this is actually because in bingo, all the numbers are going to get called eventually. They're all in there. They're all rolling around. It's, it's all there. It's already there. It's just a matter of in what order they're coming. And it feels a little bit more like a game. Um, what I did a couple of days ago, and then I did again last night, I actually had taken my original card and realized that there were some more things. So I got an even bigger piece of paper and added a few more. But what I did last night was I looked at what I had said about for myself two months ago in November, and I actually started to color code it. You can see that I've added some colors to some of mine. Originally, it was just black and white. So in our business, we have tasks and lists of things and we color code them based on where they are in, in progress. But I did the same thing with my bingo card. So things that are in play, things that I've taken action on and that I've begun are yellow. Things that have been achieved are green. Um, and so last night I recognized that even in the last two months, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 12, 12 of these things um, have been put in motion. And that's huge for me, that's huge. One of them I realized, so on my bingo card is four scheduled holidays. I've worked really hard this past year and it was something that was missing. So four scheduled holidays. And last night I looked at that and I said, I don't have to wait. I just have to decide when those holidays are. And so last night I scheduled four holidays. No big deal. Um, coincidentally, my daughter's going into the first grade and school has, guess what? Four holidays throughout the year. Um, and in the past I've just worked through them and this year I won't. So four holidays got scheduled last night. Um, and so it's yellow, it's in play, it's in progress. Um, and, and that lit up a couple of others. It's like travel to this place, go to that place, take my daughter to somewhere snowy because I'm not somewhere snowy. If you're there already, blessings be upon you. Um, but I was able to really move a lot of things forward last night just by putting a little bit more attention to my bingo card. So I highly recommend playing with this. Um, if you're open to new practices and you want to be a little silly, um, what I also noticed last night is I have four in a row already. I have four yellow in a row. They're not green yet, but they're four in a row. And the fifth thing 
The fifth thing there is New York Times bestseller, which is going to be a fun one. So it's not just bingo card. It's not just get it done. It's not a to-do list. This is playing. Okay, this is playing with dreaming and manifesting and the universe. And so it's not only fill in the squares and accomplish these things, experience these things. When you get all of a row in any direction, then celebrate again, okay? So when I get five in a row, when five of these are green, I'm gonna go do one of the other things on my list that's, you know, hire a personal shopper or, you know, travel to Mexico. Something else that I want to do, I need for me, that lights me up, I'm gonna celebrate the accomplishments, celebrate the celebration, um, because we miss that too often. So this is no longer gonna be folded and stuffed in a drawer and pulled out occasionally or looked at this time next year and be like, oops, I'm hanging this on the wall. It's gonna be right there. This is where I am every morning. I'm gonna look at it so that I can get more of these things in play. So where I need to take action, I can take action. And where I don't need to take action, I can just recognize that it's already in play, that I don't have to be the person to get it done. Let me share real quick before I sign off a story. I use metaphor. If you've hung out with me ever before, you know um, I'm a metaphoraholic. Um, I was talking with one of my teammates about sort of how we're re relating to and how a lot of our authors are relating to our goals and the things that we want. And a really common approach that still maybe can get it done, but it's really hard and exhausting and, and often frustrating is I want something, so I'm gonna take it upon myself and do it all myself and you know get myself to the breaking point and then collapse and then pick myself up, pick all the pieces up and keep going, okay? And that is a really something, I think as women we've learned to take it all on ourselves. If you wanna get it done, you have to do it yourself. And we've, we were playing with this idea that if you went to a restaurant and you ordered food, it's normal, right? Fine, but if you, went to a restaurant, ordered food with the waiter, and then walked into the kitchen and started preparing the food yourself, everyone would think that was weird. In fact, you'd probably get kicked out of the restaurant. The, re the chef would be super insulted. <laughs> and why are you going to a restaurant? Okay. So thinking about it in that context allows for me to say, which meals do I need to make myself? Which steps do I need to take? Do I need to get myself to the restaurant? Do I need to place my order? But I don't have to do all of it myself. Okay. The other element that came through when we were talking about this, this metaphor is, and I'm certainly um, a perfect example that for years, for years, I was going to the restaurant of the universe. Um, New Year's is a great example, and putting in really, really shitty orders. Okay, the universe is abundant, infinite, anything's possible. That's my thing. So it's like a fancy restaurant, but I was going to a fancy restaurant and ordering like chicken nuggets. I was ordering, you know, cheap, fast food. Thinking, well, I could survive on this. I can live on it. Could you make me this? And I want you to imagine going to the fanciest restaurant that you can imagine and ordering fast food, french fries, takeout, something really cheap. What's the chef gonna say? The chef's gonna say, no, I'm not making that. I didn't go to school, culinary school for seven years to make something that you can get at McDonald's, go to McDonald's. And so what I was doing, and I see a lot of women doing this, is we're under ordering. We're under ordering. We're not asking, first of all, for what's going to feed us and nourish us. We're not asking for what's going to light us up and fuel us. 
We're asking for the minimum and then we don't get it and we're surprised. But if I were the chef at the best restaurant you can imagine, I would absolutely have one of those chef fits in the back. If somebody asked me for like an arepa, I live in Colombia, so it's just this like cheap street food. No, I'm not making that. Challenge me. I want to make something special for you. Let me feed you, right? That's what chefs want to do. Let me impress you. Let me wow you. Let me give you a taste experience. So I always come back to that in these moments when I'm, and that's what happened here too. Like I started with a small piece of paper and I needed a bigger piece of paper. I was like, wait a minute, hang on. Let's go for the four course meal, the six course meal, right? Let's go fancy. Let's go possible. This last year has been incredible, challenging and hard and lots of learning and lots of growing, but also absolutely incredible. And I'm ready for the next year to be as incredible. So I wanted to share this with you both, just the practice of the bingo card because it's silly and it's fun. Um, and it allows for me to play. It lets me play with my, my goals and my desires rather than I used to torment myself and carry this burden and this weight and that, I don't know. No, thank you. So, so play, but also think about this. The universe is a good restaurant. Order something spectacular and let, let the restaurant, the universe provide. So that being said, some of these, I know I can take action on some of them. I don't have to take responsibility for. I can put the invitation out and let the rest happen, okay? What I shared with my community yesterday about this also is there's two other pieces I added. One is a wild card. One of these squares is just called wild card. I don't know what's coming. And I actually used to do this quite literally at restaurants. I'd tell the waiter, surprise me, bring me something. Bring me something you like. I think waiters hated it, but <laughs> it was really interesting. It was really fun. And so I've left space on my card for something that I can't yet even envision. I can't yet imagine. And in that same vein, there's a couple of these where I've written, this is the thing that I'm asking, this or something better, which opens up and is allowing me to, to see what I get when it's not exactly what I thought I was asking for, but in fact, it's better than that. Okay. If I ask for a chili cheese dog, but I get something that's better than a chili cheese dog, should I be upset? No, I shouldn't. But I used to be right. Cause I was like, Oh, but I really wanted a chili cheese dog. And instead I got a Mercedes. I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> not there. Anyway, I hope you understand the intention. So I just wanted to share this with you. Hopefully the Wi-Fi has been good. I am sending you blessings into the, f into the first day of the new year. Red Thread, we are on a mission to support 10,000 women to become successfully published authors and thought leaders in the coming year. I'm going to be doing a lot more showing up and sharing to accomplish that mission. And I cannot wait to connect with you, welcome you. If you try the bingo card, let me know what you think. If you have a practice that you love even more than this, share it in the comments. I'd love to hear. Always open to something new. Happy New Year. See you soon. Bye.